you have the alignment test coming in, isn't it? So that, that's the new system, the alignment test. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. So I'm just thinking, because we are looking at this every two years. So I'm not sure if you can, you know, add something about perhaps looking into it more, more shortly, introduce the new change of legislation, because if it takes two years from now, I think the next committee will be able to do them you know. We won't be according to the staff. Well, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I mean, basically what I'm saying is it, it would have been long out of date, wouldn't it? So, for nearly two years. But I'm just going to say this committee, it depends on the way to get the change. It, is, it has been far more flexible, so we don't have to wait. These yeah. things change, we can actually put it on the agenda. Change. So we don't have to go in it too far in advance. And we don't have to vote too far behind. Of course, we need that flexibility to be fine, I think. Sorry, so just the rest of the week, Sean, is that one? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, actually, it's, uh, it's, this is only in the narrative, isn't it? It's not actually in the main response, mm -hmm. list of responsibilities. Yeah, it's not in the main response. I suppose item A will reflect whatever current legislation. Yeah, I think I'm more happy with uh, amending that because I've been reflecting what everyone is talking about. So, are we okay with that? Yeah. Any other comments, uh, queries? Um, Paper or not, that's a week happy with those terms of reference. Yeah, should we take it that everybody in favour? Yeah. Okay. Fine. There are some D. Under page 13 of item 5, the waste local plan. So we have to do this. And that is. Uh, Joint report because the um, waste local plan is out of the boat since the end of counting on comparing jointly, so it is a genuinely joint project. Um, we um, began this in uh, early 2020 with a, uh, uh, a consultation on issues and options, but carried out um, a little further consultation on the draft plan in early. 2022, I mean this year, and um, that uh, attracted um, nearly 300 representations. Um, and since that time, um, we've been um, looking at those. Uh, we've commissioned a revised waste needs assessment, which is the end of space to look at the likely future patterns of waste generation um, in the city and county, both in terms of waste generated and how we anticipate it would be treated. Um, and we obviously are planning for uh, greater levels of recycling over the next 15 years. Um, and also it deals with the amount of weight we plan to um, landfill, which is um, seeking to be as minimum as possible, but also um, uh, waste that is um, subject to recovery, um, if we recover the community. Those are the main waste streams um, that we look at. And um, we're currently revising that. Um, that most of these assessments uh, in light of comments made. Uh, and the uh, I think we will almost at the end of that now. So uh, in the new year we'll be very final that uh, and putting that through the councils, uh, each council's uh this process. Um, where well, we have now uh, at the county council uh, the same uh, executive and uh, um, 
to meet the processes that the city had. Um, so we plan to take it to a suitable committee in um, late January to look at so, uh, involve speaking in the um, development of the plan. Um, and then it will go towards a executive in um, just like in April. Um, so we are, um, that's the final plan. So that's the plan that was then submitted um, after a consultation stage submit for the termination. Yeah. Um, so those are the next steps. Um, what's also in the report is something that was a little hungover from previous regards, which you know we met. It did relate to the operating in June and did meet in September. Um, and uh, but we did have a visit to Amazon. Uh, some of the previous committee members uh, went in May, um, and it was a useful visit to see uh, an Amazon distribution plant in operation. And one of the things that came out of that visit was how Amazon can help councils in their objectives to recycle and encourage um, residents to recycle and what to do with the packaging they they received off of Bob on Amazon. So um, uh, we did uh, so the recommendation is we do um, we have already thanked uh, uh, Amazon informally on an on email but uh, um, we still have a resolution to uh, to write to Amazon formally um, and um, encourage them to uh, increase whatever measure they can do, whether it's uh, an advice on, on packaging um, that's received about the best ways to recycle um, and uh, asking them to work with the council. So, uh, so that's the, uh, the recommendations to make your own visible and uh, send a letter to the council. Okay, so I think for me, the flavor of this is just to make sure that so I, I think we use any opportunity to share information, share innovation, uh, any new ideas or increasing or promoting uh, uh, recycling, etc. I hope that we are in a position to be able to talk to each other and share useful experiences or even things to other as well. So I, I don't know whether, yes, in our letter to Amazon, perhaps we uh, need to encourage them to actually respond with some useful suggestions. Well, because I think part of the issue there was I think mean, they described to us their packaging was still quite large and didn't really tailor to something that size, but still packaged up in a box that size, uh, which just doesn't fit uh, well with the public, does it? Uh, I appreciate you can't have an individually sized car for every item. But I think the, uh, they, they ought to have more smaller packages the cards and anyway any other uh comments uh, Mike? yeah um it's uh for me it's a fascinating subject i've got quite a few um suggestions to make if uh, people are uh, confused here but uh on amazon i actually thought they were quite sure on how they've got systems in place for adapting when they realize they've got ROC in their package size what they have to do it um, but watching the, the actual packing, I think they did need a few more sizes of small boxes available. Um, but I think it isn't that they don't devise what they do. I think some of the experience what they actually get from the supplier pass on. It's that their options they do it more often, but I think the packing station. Uh, other than that, um, I hope you tell when you talk about track 30, which means you've got the high track yet, so I'm a bit hesitant to be too critical. But it did seem to me on the last package, and they did put extra advice on if they could say, look, fold the thing up for 
uh, the, the most of the full stuff up publicly in the is that's for about things up, particularly streets where things are being left out or it's communal thing, things. So as soon as someone puts in a, a cardboard box that's way too big to sit flat, the box gets filled up. And, and, yeah, so that those are the two points I make more practice choice size choices to get smaller items and clearer advice and bold uh, materials. Um put put them in things. Um we are having to get better since we've got a national expectation for food waste recycling. Now the trial in Scotland didn't happen. So, uh, so no, that's for the bottle deposit scheme. But there's a bit of a story about the food waste recycling didn't work in the In fact, we had it about 10 years ago. We had it in four of our wards Meadows, uh, Alvarita, Stenson, Place to Um They used little uh, containers whereby the handle became the device whereby the food waste container was sealed. And um, we think the scheme works very well. But well, we stopped it. The reason we stopped it was at the time, waste that was being processed had to be taken all the way to Norwich. And there was a sense in which it wasn't actually fulfilling the green agenda. Now, from being a city where we did it in four worlds, and I'm not sure if anybody else did it anywhere else, so we can't need to receive advice on whether it actually happened anywhere else in Norwich. We're now expected to have this implemented in year one being two years since. And have it all that across the country by year four. And as I understand it, I don't know if you are that other stuff on still, with no extra financial support for the city council and the district and the boroughs are actually correct this way. Now, the reason why it would be more viable to do this time is that we have got a colleague who have got two anaerobic digesters. And I think this ilkest of this one. The charge for it, I think, is about six pounds. So I think it looks and let's say I'm getting these things slightly wrong. So that you are not dependent on sort of accurate minute or just find out what the actual figure is. I think it's 12 pounds and then Colin. The very interesting thing about Colin is if you chuck the tin and baked beans into one of those devices with Colin, it cracks open the tin and baked beans before digesting the baked beans. So there is something going on with the technology and the stuff. Not only is it around, not only is it nearer, but it's clever. So I think um, I think we should be driving on with food waste, but we need help from the government because they are going to impose a cost on city councils, borough councils, district councils, whose job it is to collect waste from people's homes, and. We, we, we are strapped for revenue at the moment, you know what I mean? That's really, really difficult for us. So if there's anything can be done about getting a message across the government, look, I mean, you are pinched up to the jaw, actually. I think it's going to be a big refund on pensions. And we're not going to be able to, but we're going to have to cut social services uh, as a result. But I think one of the other things is that I don't think there's enough passion in this subject because people have been see calling the data for the waste sorting centre now on our house now in our life. But I'll tell you what, if you go and see the waste sorting centre in college, it actually next to the anaerobic foundation is taking a couple of examples of all the anaerobic centres. You get a sense of what machinery can do, where machinery can go next. And I think where they want to go next is to do even more about the sorting. Taking glass out for a moment. You see, everybody's going on about bottle deposit schemes. Now, that's another thing that's going to come in. The trial in Scotland didn't happen. And I think they're looking at about 30 pence an item. Now, there is a sense in which people are quite excited about all that. But in the back of my mind, there's a sense of information you can store that. Um, so I think uh, it would be useful. I think if colleagues <coughs> got the chance to go and see public, we've got a sense of what it is we should be doing, what it could do next better. So they have to worry less about actually separating this sort of thing from the home, with one exception. And that is clean paper and cardboard. I think clean paper and cardboard is something that should be collected separately because if you like to stay in the home, 
So 30 paper. Yeah, obviously they do something there because it gets dirty once it's soaked in the recycle strip. But if you keep it clean, um, in the case of terrace areas in the meadows, I think we are disciplined so poor in those areas because there's so many common areas. So we need to have white hessian bags to, to, to scrub white hessian bags that actually collect um, paper. And people can keep that in house and stuff, and they can do clean paper and clean carpet within that house. And rather than needing another reading, it's the other thing we've got to get this notion that we can collect dry recycling and clean and wet recycling. It's okay, but it's another weedy bit. Now, where I used to live on Sherwood Vale, I did about five weedy bins, and I did have a compost bin on the town side. Five weedy bins and a hessian bag, I could have had the whole bloody lot, you know. Some of our places, the amount of garden yard space is very, very limited, and I think we should be. Yeah, in that in our heads, so we need to take paper, clean paper, clean cardboard, um, separately as the next priority, and uh, um, um, then uh, um, explore with our hessian bags. By the way, we should get into shipping bins and uh, shipping hessian bags. Oh, it's oh, nice. That's again, shipping. But it chips. Everybody thinks all that's big thing charged by waste. None of that works. But what it tells you is, give us the bag of the box, and the bin belongs to the stock and arsenal, got nicked. And it also tells you, have you collected a waste that way? You know what I mean? You actually go, no, we get a sort of complaint about this bit. You know, actually, we went down that street, thank you very much. You know, so, so I think the chipping, that we manage street bins and streets uh, better, is very, very important. Um, my, my, on the generation. Can, can I just, before you go on to anything else, can we just, uh, so we don't mess those points, can we just pick up? Uh, I don't know. It's, I think you're probably insinuating. Uh, is it worth trying to do a similar visit to the AD like we did yeah. to Amazon? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, so it's, I, I was actually at the waste recycling. I mean, I think the AD actually was well, quite so as well. So in the next week, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm yeah, yeah, to, yeah. A, yeah, no. to, to basically uh, increase the uh, the knowledge. Yeah. Etc. Um, and uh, also, I guess in terms of the collection, I, I don't know whether it might be a bit too ambitious or a bit too big. Whether we invite some district um, representatives along to because it relates to how we collect or how waste is collected, as well as how it's disposed. Of, you know. Um, but uh, maybe we could all do it in two segments. Uh, pay a visit to ourselves first, and then maybe expand it out as a collection of authorities. Uh, 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 just on that one, the joint waste group still being so we don't see with it anymore. But so yeah, if we arrange the whoever's chairing the joint waste group at the moment, it represents the most advocate groups. I yeah. said that would be used. Yeah, so we are trying. this is a bit of left-handed, right-handed, but so uh, yeah. actually know what's going on. That's what we really have to make sense. I understood some great incineration for a little bit. Yeah. Um, again, I'll be a bit these things. It's this thing about talking about energy for waste. Right? We absolutely need to get it across to people. It is energy plus ferrous metals. Plus aluminium, plus the majority of the waste, then becoming construction materials from waste. And I know it doesn't trip off the top, all right? I get it. But one of the things that really people don't grasp about incineration, they just think it's an energy scheme, and so is it. Um, I think they think more about the toxic gases. Well, yeah, and of course, we are way, way, way beyond that now. You will get more dioxins in your lungs. From leaning over a couple of babies, like the rashes of babies or crying on your uh, your um, cooker, than you will ever get from the incinerator um, because of the samples we've got now. I know there's industry for all this, but we are so much better. And it's true with fly ash. Fly ash has to be treated. The rest of the waste is our ferrous metals that we easily, because it all gets sorted abundantly by the way. 
before it gets sent to various places for various metals. Uh, it's processed separately. The aluminium is reused and processed separately for precious metals because the facility for the existing grip that goes to Holland. Uh, and those are all those other metals, copper, which is going to be clearly a worldwide shortage of copper given our dependence on copper. But also, you know, what gold and silver's got in there and stuff like that, you know, that's getting done. And then there's a, a plant near Burton that takes the the rest of the waste, including the glass that's got on there, and sends it to construction materials. So practically all of the waste that the incinerator plant gets reused and still doesn't say we should try and recycle, we should, because recycling avoids it's better to recycle glass than to chuck it into the construction material. But all that. Hang on to that door. Never ever again say empty for waste without thinking empty plus recycling for waste because we are reusing for waste because that's uh, that's what we do. And so it's always very pleased to hear that uh, our colleague from East Lake, who was on the committee beforehand, but not now. Sorry, I've got an option. Sorry. But he, he, he said he, he required a condition on the incinerator plant for. Uh, that the hot water has to get used. I'm really yeah. pleased to hear that because I think there's a new plant near Bedford that doesn't do it. I think it just chucks the heat away. And here's the thing I hang on to on this gaining electricity from steam, very steam, because that's the other thing we get. We get electricity from the day is the end of the place. We get the hot water because we've got this really bad households. And of course, those are the thing is in the country. Biggest and we expand to expand into serve the boots islands with a different uh, temperature scheme, not the hot water temperature scheme, but a lower temperature scheme. So fantastic what we what we plan to do. Um, but they don't they don't use a hot water at all as well. Like it's a scaffold. Again, I understand there's a national expectation these things should use hot water. But how on earth are you going to get this heat I mean, at such a remote location to use all the energy from hot water. But here's the other thing I'm not to. I'm talking about an energy plant uh, for nuclear fusion. A lot of the energy that they're applying to is energy from heat. That is really hard to do once you're past the steam cells. And a lot of that energy will be lost because they, they won't have a distribution system associated with that either. Um, so I just Sorry, go on about this kind of stuff, but once you get into the green channel, you realise just how much there is going on. It's just what we really could do. And we've just come from such a long way that in 1948 at East Rock, we decided the best way to roll the uh, machine called the Destructor. 1948 is when we started. So there's huge, the amount of landfill. Only did we start with this region in 72. And still, people have to ask what this really, really is. He's planning to do it for right? We actually contracted people who were in stands in their new house of stands. They have to have this really you know, next option. Go against the actually, yeah, but you do have to have um, this really Can you imagine that kind of degree of planning and then, so we say, central authority to contract, whereby people who live near a place that has an incinerator are required to have. I, I have always, uh, uh, as a roughly borough councillor, I've always uh, said that the incineration should be part of the recycling rates uh, because, as you illustrated, it's yeah, yeah. recycling. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I know, but no, sorry, un under the, the general heading of yeah. recycling, but, uh, and they refuse to uh, incorporate it, whereas uh, I mean, anything that's not going to landfill uh, has, has got to be welcome. Um, sorry, so just back on a honestly very interesting point from the experts there. Um, the one issue we have been working on recently is the uh, local development order for the yeah. rapid bit on Saw Power Station. Um, and we have made explicit representations to Rushford uh, who are putting that together. But that should enable this piece of work of these problems um, of that development that from, from the emerge, those that now obviously emerge, it's not there yet. Neither is 
we felt our side. So clearly the opportunity exists, but uh, the work to continue. And um, in the redeveloped record, as a side. So uh, we can do what we can as a as a county to encourage the LDO to provide the planning framework for that to take place. Uh, but this is where we've got the planning aspects that provide relevant policies and encouraging policies. And obviously, you have to work with the industry and and there's lots of other as the late um, management um, to, to, uh, to actually do the work. Yeah, uh, but it's all this is provided for in the local plan. Um, we, we've got some issues, some people have major issues with energy proposed plans. Um, it's a major campaign group locally to fight the national, you know, but they do have plates. Uh, in fact, we are, so what we're planning to do with the latest emerging local, local plan is to reduce the level, the assumed level of waste up to landfill, take that down. Because put 10% in consumption last time, we feel that's probably together us really, and it doesn't, doesn't put waste, helps to put waste up the hierarchy. Um, and some of the uh, uh, some of the figures that we put into it about um, what what existing capacity uh, we've got is slightly modified because there's there's some facilities that are very specialist uh, energy recovery facilities. So, so we're creating sufficient capacity or huge capacity capacity for other issues as, as we can. So, but it's still open planning for recycling revenue of 65% is the national target. Yeah. Well, yes, I mean, our recycling rates are far. It's oh, it's no way that that work well enough. Well, I think our city figure is 29% of waste, uh, but less than 10 percent goes to that film. Uh, then I think that's the fly access is what's going on. Well, oh, sure, so, we're down below 5%. Uh, we're we're above less than 5%. Yeah, it varies. Oh, well, but now in the county, yeah. of what? Of oh, waste so, of land, waste goes to that, but by the less like this, you're all using ice in that as well. Yeah, the, um, the other thing I'm well, excited I mean, we, we, we've got this great focus on the home. And I live at the back of a, 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 what I call a business that keeps it anonymous. They don't train people to look after the building to solve the waste problem. They shut such waste of that that it just, just goes out instead of being probably reused. And when it's 75% of the waste that's going from the not long, you still need a much better, stronger focus on businesses and other institutions for that to do much more about you sort of show the discipline. Uh, and I say, I because they've got in this institution, they've got green bags, so, and I don't see through these green bags. And I see the amount of stuff that's plainly not recycled going into a bag because it's coloured green. Yeah, I mean, now there's a sense in which I think Edinburgh are coping with this much more than they ever used to. I think something has happened, that's why I've always been to visit. But we also need to stop thinking as councillors, you've got constituents, and what they do with their domestic budget. You have got to get to think about. What do we do to get businesses to be much more effective? Because I think that's the fastest way to get a much bigger leap in recycling before we do that. Isn't that part of the, the, the environment? Well, um, yeah, our business. Yeah. Obviously, we want to get some of our producers to uh, yeah. produce less for a better But yeah, it writes about the fact that the recycling rates relate well, to well, domestic well, waste rather than. If you want to relate to commercial waste. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if I am right. I just, the numbers I know, I know, but I don't know if we stack it. Uh, so I'm prepared to correct on that. But um, there is a sense in which uh, I'm surprised Gantia has been better than not. Um, but maybe it's, um, uh, maybe that's just how it is. But I, I uh, the 
just like Singer said, they're made for better knowledge, so we have better advocates, so we press on these things. And also, press back on government, where actually they put the burdens on us without paying the Yeah, but I think, that help. I think this is a, another case where it'd be great for us to be uh, not just acquiring knowledge, but sharing the knowledge and working together. Because at the end of the day, geographically, is the county of Nottinghamshire geographically, and therefore, why shouldn't we all be working together to try and get the best results? Yeah, trousers, for instance. Yeah, well, exactly. Uh, that's mentioned a bit later on, isn't it? And there's another item. So let's not talk about trousers. Um, Matt, anything you want to add on time? Can you just correct me on any comments on the screen? Right. Any uh, anything else on that? Or can we go to the recommendation? Well, do we do we want a recommendation on a trip? Uh, yeah. Well, I think let's uh, talk about um, exploring the possible. I mean, we need to contact them to ask them if they're happy. To uh, invite us for a start. I, I think Amber would like to hand off on that. I don't know if you want to go to the Mine Mansfield. I don't know if I'm What's the one in Mansfield? The company that runs here in Mansfield. Oh, well, yeah. Eh? Well, we use Mansfield, yeah. And what's the company? Amber. Oh, Veolia. So, Veolia. Oh, you talking about the recycling facility? Oh, right. We've we'll all been to that. Oh, yeah. so I've got. I've already been, we've been well, to we Mansfield, the Mansfield. <laughs> but I, I was more. Yeah, so well, you know, this is going to be linked to feeding the. Uh, I've got a massive one. Have they got good separation? Do we know what they're doing? Well, I do have some issues with them because they're still doing it exactly the same way as they did it uh, a couple hundred years ago when we first started the contract. Uh, and they haven't changed their way of working. Um, and well, they're not maybe... keeping up with modern ways of doing things. Well, I'm going to try and organise the community trip to. So, uh, and, uh, I do think you should all see the arrow test. So, I mean, I want to see what's shot for about 10 years. Uh, because uh, with digest as well, we've got private ones, certainly, I know that they've been run with the two films um, around the council. Uh, I, I think that the joint, this is probably a, something for the joint waste uh, or the committee, whatever they call themselves, to. Uh, Enter into agreements to feed these amaryllis digesters with uh, food waste that will be collected. I'm sure they're already doing that. Do you have to Within the site visit with you, yeah, yeah, let's, let's do it. Explore the thing that, that we explore the possibility of a visit to Amber. Okay. Right. With that, everybody okay with that? Yeah. Good. Let's move on to the invite to Mrs. Dix. Another UK. We'll go to the joint back, shall we? So. I'll cover the playoff bits and Tim will cover the six bits. Uh, uh, do you want to start, Tim, uh, as well on hard work at the start? Yes, well, I'm very pleased that um, we finally managed to have the full bus bus station and we've got some buses and coaches going. Yeah, actually using it. It's good for it. Um, um, but uh, as you can see, it's a very state of the art uh, facility and uh, it's both city and uh, County, county, county passengers. Um, we still have some uh, express coach operators who are still picking up the street, um, which is mega bus and Prince bus. Um, but at the moment, uh, we don't have any further operators who are planning to move into the into the Broad Market bus station at the moment. And um, we have some. Small bus service changes which began September to reflect our reduced uh, revenue support budget. Um, but uh, other than that, um, I think uh, I've not got anything more to say about all bonds. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, do you want to? Uh, yeah, I, 
I think we need to be clear on this. I think now we are saying broad marsh is too early. It's too early. Now, I think we're rebranding that. And I, I just think we need to get clear where we stand. Here. And I think there was a sense in which broad marsh was one word for the shopping area. It's too early before shopping. My apologies, Councillor. No, no, no. I mean, my spelling error. But I mean, I've, I've just had a look, and it's a mixed response on the internet. So some some people got the message, and others haven't. Um, so uh, it's you know, it's not just offices, and it's well, the outside world has been treated with the stories as well. I think the rationale is that the shopping centre was well, our shrine for the seventies, but no one's spoken about that. You know what I mean? And we are trying to get that sense of it was an area that was like right before. Um, it was for broad marsh. Um, so um, that, that would just be the point on that. Um, I think we just got to work a lot harder on getting. Um, well, I mean, the big change for us, of course, is people are shopping packs to change now because that comes on later in the paper. <laughs> Doesn't it? We do the traffic pack to change. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's a big shot for us. I haven't worked so hard all those years to reduce the amount of keys. Uh, now it's happened with our massive car park and people aren't using the bus crafts to send through the bird. And that's a real charge for it. So I'm going to say, can we have ready to say about that? Well, uh, later on in the paper, we talk about the bus service improvement plan. Yeah. And so we've got quite a number of measures in there which will involve. Um, um, uh, for example, bus bus lanes um, uh, on all the major radial routes in and out in and out of Nottingham, and of course for bus pass bus passengers, the certainty of the journey time and reducing journey time is a very big incentive to travel by bus. So, with those kind of those kind of measures, down the track lines, etc., um, those will hopefully with um, with the incentive of actually a better thing to the city centre for actually people to can actually go to, um, should actually then encourage people to um, travel travel more by more by bus. I realise that that's that's not the totality of the things that uh, needed, and uh, we do need modal shift in other other areas, um, particularly around say for example, people going to the hospital in and around the city. Um, but you know that is one of the challenges that we we have in place. I mean, I, I, I don't think we are talking about chumps later on. But I mean, I mean, it was such a heartbreak that when there was the latest scheme that subsidised bus bus travel, there was extended fellow chumps as well. So yeah, we got to a bizarre situation where the light rail sector, every city where it exists, is under the most tremendous. Financial pressure because of the pandemic and all that, and there's no big no financial support. And Councillor, I think that uh, I think the reason for that is that there is a there is a misunderstanding possibly at the central government level as to the you know the nature of nature of tram travel, tram travel, and its equivalence to buses. Uh, they do tend to if you don't have a tram system your area, people tend to. Not, not think, not think about, not think about it. Well, perhaps you are pushing the Latin. Other well, do our RFPs, but others who represent parts of the ground, they both want to join in. We really appreciate that because uh, yeah, they're under incredible pressure. Uh, right, so, uh, Steve, I'm, I was here. Yeah. Um, I'm a uh, district chaos, a door chaos, uh, for Beast and Dawn. And whilst Beast is about to travel down to the left, uh, where I live, uh, you might as well not have to try that work because the only way to get to it is by walking three mile air train or by charging the car. One of the uh, of the tram car parks and get on the tram there. So most people will want to use bus. Yeah, we have a bus route that goes down the 1852. But the estates are the side of it have got hardly anything. You certainly cannot get on the north of Eastern into Eastern Town Centre. On the bus, because it's been reduced from 120 bus journeys a week to eight bus journeys. The 11 and 12 disappeared in 
was replaced by the 30, which operates on a Monday and a Wednesday. Six times. Uh, sorry, no, four times. So eight. And then the last prospecting speaks to at two minutes past two, and then goes back to where it uh, at five minutes past two, so unless you see the man or woman, you've got a bit of getting shot, it doesn't last a long time. So it's needless to say, it's not a very popular book, so it's dead 5,000 books, isn't it? Yeah, but, okay. yeah uh, but um, I have to say, yeah, trams are fine if you live within a vicinity of the tram. But let's not forget the people who are dependent on buses. I spoke to a lady the other day who's a very lonely lady who lives in Frankfurt. And she goes on this course twice a week in the morning and comes home to the last week she's chilling on. The rest of the time, she spends 80 pounds a week on taxi beds to get to where she wants to go. And that can't be wrong. It just can't be wrong. And, and I know that we're struggling for money, I know the city is struggling. But the government needs to realise that the people in this situation are being resurfaced. And Anyway, that's my own, but yeah, well, I was just about to say, uh, we're actually get, starting to get a long way from Broad yeah. Bath. Sure, I guess, yeah, I do apologize. Yeah. Uh, let's get back to the full mind first stage. Uh, I would yeah. like to get back to Broad Bath first stage, but before we do that, can we just make well, one? Can we take the bus? Yes, no, I just wanted to mention devolution because devolution is obviously one of those things that we help in terms of concession schemes as well by Pluto. So this is something that perhaps we need to add into the equation when we talk about extending consensus where it would some trouble each own. Uh, look at the possibility of the pollution actually get to do some of that. Yeah, so I think that's that. where the devolution debate uh, will Absolutely. address that. Yeah. Uh, and obviously Dave Mellon and uh, your colleague or his colleagues, your colleagues, uh, and then obviously Crossman and County and then Derbyshire. Yeah, that's that's where hopefully. Uh, more integrated transport will come into its own more uh, within the devolution debate. So uh, I think that's probably where it needs to be discussed in more detail. Uh, right, let's move over. A little bit of old news uh, that the first opportunity to report it. So we are finally completed the regional economics remotely. I mean, they basically take all the gates each one or two. Uh, to support growth in the area, but also to relieve local communities to get the village through traffic. Um, it's low traffic in March this year and was finally complete in August this year. And we've been monitoring it excessively after a year to see how things are working. The current figures are pretty positive, so we've currently got 7,000 vehicles uh, not only the, on the new road today. Uh, and the flows on Armour Lane have gone down from 14,000 to about 8,000. The flows on Jury Hill have gone down from 15,000 to about 9,000. I think they're heading in the right direction, but we will keep an eye on the next couple of monitors and that has been to move forward. Um, the, the scheme itself is a result of in speed limit changes, additional weight limits, and such like. Um, so we'll see how things go. I'm going to keep an eye on it. So I think the, the, the good news is that uh, there are no puzzles as yet. So, uh, we think we'll have to sell it. Yeah. Can I just say that all those things are correct. It, it's, it is working well as far as we can get this concern. The other the only concern is that I would lately sell reduction in traffic. The reduction in the heavy traffic has a bit greater than we expected. Right. There's still quite a lot of heavy traffic. Yeah, don't that's the issue. Yeah. So it's actually trying to get the message to the industry. Again, I suppose perhaps to use the new road. But it's a, there are general, general complaints about the heavy traffic. So we think this perspective to almost disappear. It hasn't been really a great deal of difference. But the great bit of traffic has been quite a lot, but the heavy stuff, not as much as we hoped. Because there's no more development ongoing currently as we think, you know, um, it's yeah. that is a bit artificial. Uh, yeah, some of it's infrastructure, infrastructure traffic, yeah. isn't one of the very reasons you don't want to do four or one thing, it will be used on that sort of box while things better down, and let's yeah. make things um, sort themselves out. So it could be a few rides, and yeah. there is still more HPVs on there than you want. Yeah. Okay. Right, uh, so. Uh, 
So I think that um, so the town council committee, they definitely got big for about 40 million pounds to do with uh, the, the total link roads. Um, so this is a um, multi connected boulevard. Um, so it's basically providing better links to the Grand Park and Ride, it's providing better walking and cycling links. Um, but also, again, a bit like the Kadarski, the a local significant development opportunities. So there's the bids gone into levelling up funds. We haven't yet got a decision on it. We're expecting a decision on it any day. Um, but it, it, it should provide some sort of real leap to fix the local area and allow growth in the, in the area. So we're, we're, we're trying to make something that not just about it, but it's a highway capacity. It's very much about the local facility uh, to encourage staying on both of the area. Uh, but I can't say too much at this stage, really, because we haven't got certain yet. It's where we're hopeful, and we've got our fingers crossed that we'll get a, a positive decision. Uh, but the latest news on the leveling up fund is some of it may get delayed into the third round, and some of it will be announced this time round. But we are expecting announcements to sign. Yeah, the uh, one of the risks will be is that the costs. Escalate so much as it's uh, become unachievable. Already discovering that on the list of 614 uh, road yeah. improvements. So, um, yeah, we can't keep the tight rain on it and work quite well. Yeah, yeah, but it comes to the state, it's funny, it goes to, to the tender process. Yeah. Yeah. You can't legislate for it. Yeah. Okay, right. So, anything on zero we want to see? Okay, thank you. So, um, government accepted our bid for six fifteen million pounds uh, to buy seventy eight uh, new zero emission uh, buses, fully uh, electric, um, which will come into the Nottingham City fleet. Um, the intention was to replace all the existing single deck buses in the NCT fleet with these. Um, there is going to be a Slight variation to the to the order, so that we can actually have some. Uh, I think it's about a dozen uh, double deck buses, uh, because the because the the um, both the bid was put in, uh, service was were were different, and uh, they would want to now that they've changed changed again to reflect on, we would be able to have. Um, some uh, double deck buses yeah. include included that. Good, correct, Mike. Yeah, no, uh, thanks. Uh, we you part of this was thanks to the officers for this because uh, uh, that means that uh, I get uh, the deco in my board gets converted to electric. So uh, that's that's terrific. So thank you for that. Um, just that sense thing is just going to keep driving on. So come in tender. Okay. Um, so is that right? I didn't, I didn't think of the park. Uh, you listen to Radio Four a lot. That's what happens. Just. It was quite funny, really, wasn't it? Um, just the, you know, the, the thing is that uh, this thing about driving on buses. I mean, we put workplace parking at it. So the commuters it paid for some of our network supporters. You know, I mean, the times that we've had to put up with uh, opposition from people who aren't in the house, say, oh, you don't want to do it like that. We've taken tough decisions in Nottingham City to make sure there is money to subsidise the bus services that are otherwise not commercially viable. It takes a political result when you're in power to make that kind of change. I always have to remind people that because, but, you know, we weren't guaranteed an electoral reward for that when we put it in. We were the first in the country to do it. Probably the only one in the country to have done it. The only ones in Europe to have done it. We're the only ones in the Northern Hemisphere to have done it. That's how radical we were because we said if we want to turn around the historic year by year fall. In bus use and then public transport use, you have so called you have to support the services, and that's what we did. We prioritized the services, we gave the city center over, 
the losses so they've been getting those traffic jams and the more that you said play buses that try to get into the city centre. We have transformed them so that it's absolutely geared for public transport and we have got the results as a result. But it still needs subsidy. And here we are with all this pressure on our revenue. And, and in 20, 30 years now, I'll say, oh God, yes, we all need to do it like that. But we've done it and we did it. We made the big change in 2001 when it wasn't popular. And we introduced workplace parking in 2011, I think. Well, and no one thought that was the thing we should be doing. And we did it. And it's given us the results that we've got. And we just now hear about other cities who want to join us. Quite what we do about places that don't have workplace parking. Don't find all the same resources to run support their bus network because the commercial bus still commercial services can't be trusted. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, you know, yeah. the final thing to say about this, not only have we got the best publicly owned bus company in the country, we've also got the best privately owned bus company in the country. We've got the train car, which you never actually forget. Sometimes the private sector do do it well. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you about getting going. Good. Lovely. Um, I think plus improvement, we've already talked about. Yeah, plus improvement. Really. So, I think the evolution by us sort of well, that is a work in progress on the, the further negotiation between the various authorities. So, are we happy to note? Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, we're on to the uh, J part. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just a regular update on the uh, work of the joint planning advisory board. Um, you'll know from the previous meeting that uh, uh, Grace Muslim's strategic plan for the approach uh, has been prepared, which just sets out key growth proposals about how to get the so it's slimmed down for the original uh, only covering housing on the other aspects. I was hoping to be able to report today that consultation would begin on Monday. Um, but given the recent ministerial statement, uh, which indicates more flexibility around housing numbers and protection, increased protection, green belt, um, as a result of that, Gedling have approved the plan but subject to uh, the removal of one of the sites, which is too close to them, uh, which is in the green belt. Um, so, as a result of that, we need to revise the first approach document um, and amend all the supporting documents to take account that the material close is, uh, is no longer um, an outdated site. So, uh, we're therefore intending to begin the consultation on 3rd January, um, and, but as Christmas is no longer part of the consultation period, we uh, we're able to consult this for a six week period rather than eight period. So the impact on the timetable of the plan as a whole um, isn't as big as it as it might otherwise be. So that consultation will take place. The comments will feed into a full version of the plan, the final regulation 19 version, which we are hoping to publish in representation uh, in the summer, um, following which we attempt to submit that uh, late next year. Oh, well. Can I quickly ask, so get linked to one side, uh, Rockstone and yesterday night, so what, what did you come from Rockstone? Rockstone, sorry, good news, Rockstone okay. uh, approved it, but it was a very easy to approve, just this of no allocation, new allocations, and oh. then we've been on the green belt, so we're quite the first time for many years. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll have to change that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm absolutely not going to talk about green belt models. Well, uh, I've got a bit of a green belt there, but not by legal terms. Look, uh, I'm not sure people have grasped yet because this is what has happened to Nottingham City. But I came to Nottingham in the 80s. I think we had 35,000 university students. In the latest estimate, 7,000. I had to do a student journalism exercise a couple of weeks ago. Met a journalist who wants to live in Nike, using every day for Peace, but he's the risk of student accommodation. That's despite 
my ward on a street called Traffic Street, I've got 1,000 extra student bases provided in the last 18 months. I have had, the year before that, I've got 330, I think, on Queen's Road. We are planning to uh, consider applications for 600 more student heads on Traffic Street and 400 more uh, post-social student college. So, uh, bedrooms are on. Um, on Queen's Road by Lovelock Road. But now that we have got huge increases in purpose-built street accommodation on the northeast of the city centre of what is now St Aldeborough and St Aldeborough. Huge, huge numbers going in and still there's a massive shortfall. But that's put an incredible pressure on the private sector, uh, uh, the sector alone, because we've got selective licensing. We've got powers to mitigate against and family has to be converted. Those that we don't do anyway. Now, the events of the university not only growing, but they are an economic engine in the city. Now, they're really driving the city on. Um, yeah, we've got data where we're at. Yes, we've got games, workshops, stuff like that. Yes, we, we've got the big hospitals. But wow, they are a massive growing sector and the housing credit is enormous. I don't know if you're getting it, I, I know of at least three families now that are in weekdays in hotels. Yeah. They've got private landlords who had about the children being killed with a little mould in their house. We, we, we had a case in the Meadows recently, found out by the head teacher because the kid was saying that poorly all the time at school, they could have broken out the arm. We so need a drive on housing, and then to find out that the government struck the targets. Well, presumably, I was making these points in the trade map. Well, and Chair, I'm sorry that uh, I'm not allowed, I wasn't, I'm not delegated to go anymore because I used to go to trade card and I used to try and talk to people there. I didn't think it's important. Can you speak up, please? So, I, I, I did try to, to stay on trade card, but it's just like that. People don't understand the pressure we are under now. We are getting um, landlords finding rents for private households by 100 quid a year. And when, when the tenant says no, they say, oh, so 50 this year and 100 next year. I've got a plain terrace, new uh, two bedroom house on our front wall being charged at £1,400 per calendar month for private rent. That sense of crisis that we are having now, and that's not clear at all to me that people are getting. And then to hear that the national government is dropping targets. Um, right, but the people get the crisis we're in. And it isn't, that isn't just the investors, of course, it's people living in smaller units, people living longer, or in the end. The pressure is enormous. And, um, People get it, and this thing of our oh, great that we don't have to meet targets anymore. I think it's a real problem. It's a real problem. Yeah. Come back to that, I'm sure. Of course, yeah, absolutely not sure. Well, I should probably just say was that uh, if you don't have to abide by the targets, the government targets set the level, so each individual council can go up that. I know the last law has actually done that. So, uh, in at uh, one point, we're proposing twice what the government target was. Uh, so, uh, at that point, you No, I, 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 I'll take advice from Matt on just where we are on, on targets. Uh, if the student population is quite complicated, I think get a, a count of one for every four or five, I can't remember the price, precise number. Uh, and we have got um, even more student accommodation planned at. Um, uh, Boots Island or Island Falls, for example, that's kind of stuff, stuff like that. And the thing we did is that we saw its restrictions on the community council area. But our housing council area is 8,000, 8, 7,000 households on the council area of way, 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 way in this phenomenon. Ever more popular because of the conduct of private landlords, because of the rents they're now charging because of the market pressures we're under. We, we make a surplus out of the council. 
if only we could be released from the pressure so that we could actually do something about the quality or exercise because there is opportunities to develop. That knows and like the back of the town, so I don't need to say what it's like. There's loads. Or we need to be released to be able to get on and provide exercising because with exercise, people know they get quality of service, they know they get assurances about increases in rents. It sounds serious, folks, and I'm not being critical of Jake, no, but I find it a very worthwhile uh, committee to, to attend, and it's important to talk and listen and have those conversations. But yeah. we absolutely need radical change. Right, right. Well, you know, I don't want to get into too much of the detail, Jonathan, because uh, that debate needs to be actually had through Jake and myself. So, how long? Yeah, so what I wanted to say is that I'm glad you know, that um, obviously uh, Brockstow approved the draft plan and we have put extra resources on this and all of them have a commitment to see this through. So uh, we need to obviously be working on it. Um, uh, what I would say is in terms of the plan that we've approved, uh, you know, we, we negotiated that, uh, we've arrived at the conclusion. Uh, there are government legislations that at the moment are not fit for purpose in my opinion. Uh, and I'll go back to what Matt and I think that's all the time about the 35% tablet and, uh, and the, the fact that it creates pressures and issues in the city because we cannot meet our housing targets. Uh, they're unrealistic, uh, except of course if you start densifying or reducing the quality of, of, of new buildings coming in, which is not what we want to say. And as much as I understand that when county colleagues come to committees and talk about green belt and how difficult it is to build a green belt, it's also difficult for us to, to you know, reduce the quality of our housing. And, and, and the way we build our house and provide houses for our for our residents. Um, and, and it does upon all the land of us that Pastor Edwards and, and, and other councils spoke to committee as well. So um so yeah, I mean I, I'd really appreciate if we could join forces uh, uh, uh Neil and, and you know push the government to, to alter those rules to very strictly rules for city regions because it's just unrealistic. Okay. Steve, well, I was gonna say well as a piece of the council, I'm well aware that pressures that are going up in the city. It's filling over into me, which is why Rockstone Council actually had to introduce a new special plan government to restrict the number of age homes that they did on one specific area. And we're always told uh, by the developers building notes of students' combination that it will uh, actually uh, relieve the pressure on the private sector bills and stuff. It doesn't because the university just increases the number of students that they bring in, so it's always a, a, a rubbish. But I wonder, like, because I was said earlier about no new allocations, no pre belt being given up, doesn't mean that Brockstone isn't building panels in spot far from the country. It's because we are built so many and we've got so many on the street that we're in the position that we don't have to make any new allocations or give up any pre belt. And we are building panels in Brockstone, we've now got hundreds. And that doesn't sound a lot, but so it's a hundred that we didn't have before. It's a hundred plant in, in the Brockstow area. Uh, and I've had other people to think that Brockstow are doing everything towards the, the housing the crisis, I would say, because yes. we are. Okay. So just to add the other aspect, I didn't mention, Phil, we've got iron commission for uh, 150 bucks at the head of Cambridge Island. Uh, well, about the Scotland sort of thing. You know, it for more than two years, you can't find a way to find So, 300 odd board at the top of the uh, uh, Sheriff's Way. They found a way to find it. That application came in last month, but not only 400 students, but it's only like 200 flats, including a 22 story tower. They're not. We reject, we just didn't look right, but they've come back with a solution for the ship that they've given up on being able to finance, finance uh, apartments uh, for um, other people. There's something also going on the way for their own development to talk down and uh, people we call it the trust main here or whatever it was that the, the panic that came in from trust got the prime minister. But, but, we, we, we've actually got private members who've got time commissions on hundreds of apartments and not getting on with it because they can't get it financed. Yeah, I think I've that problem uh, in lots of places, in towns and rural places as well, where developers get permission on them. So they sit on it. And oh, I, I, I think it's just so certainly that developers should be, if you don't, a bit like bus services, you 
don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, I'm sure that's a good point. I, I think our point is so I think I think there's something happening in, in the way plans. But I don't doubt that these developers sit, sit, they want to build. I think they want to build, they just can't get it financed. Whereas I I don't think it's land banking, which I think is some point land banking, but it's a separate point. Okay. Right. So uh okay to uh, note this for that. Okay. Thank you. So that takes us on to the work program, which uh, seems to be a bit like sort of business as usual. Yeah. Um, part of this all is about the future work program. Yes, um, little um, terms of business as usual. Yeah, we always have reports on most plan or building plan depending on where it is accountable. Your plan. And uh, as we have today, so obviously just projecting that again in the future, but so we do have opportunity to discuss specific items, uh, items that um, council has obviously raised. Um, I, I must admit, we didn't have a working chance to discuss this, is obviously beforehand in terms of each item to make which to agree. So, uh, uh, to uh, there are any items that uh, any of the committee or the system can add to the program the next few I think it would be useful. I mean, if I'm looking on here, there's nothing on here about the minimum. I missed that. I'm just wondering, I mean, perhaps the minimum is not the minimum. Yeah, I think it's uh, we can do an update before. Obviously, we only adopted the plan last year, um, and uh, I certainly do a report on progress with science. Yeah, well, that's a day report achieved. Well, we just give uh, other plans. We, 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 we've got to mention on uh, sales values uh, over the last few years, although being affected by over the certain um, but we had those figures. Um, it would just be a lot, effectively a lot of people. I think uh, when you've got some more positive information, yeah. detailed information on the level of demand for sand and gravel uh, in the context of planning and shape up and house building, yeah. uh, markets slowing down at the moment, so obviously. It's got to increase again at some stage. Uh, so, if when you've got some detailed information on that, well, that's probably the best time to to bring uh, an update. I think. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, the strategic custom plan monitoring perhaps start something on the strategic custom plan and have more information in terms of the consultation being done not now, but obviously when we have some more news about it. Really. To discuss it as a committee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mike. So I know John indicated for me. So uh, no, you weren't looking, Chairman. It's, it's all right. It's just uh, well, I think we've we've expressed an interest uh, that when the HS2 information was available for uh, how they're going to uh, um, sort of develop it into the Nottingham City Centre trains. Are coming right into the city centre now. That's the proposal rather than the total. When we get that information, we have an update on it. Yeah, um, yeah, happy to have to be sort of like for information. The danger would be is we don't want to replicate or duplicate a whatever debate is going on in devolution uh, negotiations. But yes, yeah, so an update just for information first. Yeah. If this is only uh, don't want to be tied to that, to of course, down to the housing, the HS2, etc. I've got to remember that the sun and run and other extractions used for chemicals and used for all sorts of things. So we have to actually have, have a plan for getting everything from coal, gas, whatever. whatever. So it was worth having an update just to see how, how the plan is actually planning out without any specific detail. Which I guess we got this right. I mean, I can't remember some of the issues, some of the interesting or something, some of the uh, sort of, some sort of weird things. 
It's not just building that they're sending around the service. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's just one I think I asked this before, maybe it's got lost, but can we explore whether there's an opportunity for us to do more about getting the future green economy? I mention it because I know there's a business, I think it's old because it might be old, but uh, trying to do the prefab, the highest standard prefabricated wooden buildings. And then they've actually been put in on the Sportballs railway side and five weeks the railway station. And they've actually got planning permission that's sitting, I think, of course, server about now. Um, with the firm, actually, the firm is used for East Yorkshire. So this sense of people have now got an, a way of doing this stuff better, way better than it has been close second or more. But those bit, the businesses that are striving that is East Yorkshire based are not not your Shadarshire. And then with wind and solar and tidal, everybody's pointing out about how that stuff depends on the weather, although tidal comes from the sun. But what you then need is the ability to store electric power. We're going to need new infrastructure on the electric, electric power network that stores these things, things called liquid metal batteries. Can we be the source, but not given an option, to be doing that technology in Britain? Uh, same with the, um, the fact that the Finns have now worked out to store the great big containers of salt to increase the capacity of. Um, District heating schemes. Same with storing uh, energy in what are called gravity batteries and stuff like that. It's all these technologies going on that others in the world are starting to far ahead of. Maybe we could be the first example of having it in not even our adoption. We, our, our economy used to be based so much on coal, on energy. Why can't we be part of the new green technology wave? So, I'm just wondering if we can have some kind of presentation, some kind of future committee, whether we find out what the candidates for the future technologies are, whether we in Nottingham Rock can be part of that vision and get the jobs here first to make up for the fact that we've lost the jobs at the Would that be to just to hold that for the right, uh, at least just the right forum to start yeah, yeah. be on planning and transport? But... Yeah, I should well, I think it's probably we just need to check to see whether it's, whether it's been done through any scrutiny yeah. uh, forum. Uh, I mean, Mike's point was it related to uh, construction, uh, which okay is tied to planning, but then are we also treading on the toes of Jane Park, et cetera? There's just the danger of. Uh, it's sort of getting on a merry go round of duplication, uh, which uh, they wanted to avoid the stem stage. Yeah, I've been on the uh, on battery technology. It's interesting uh, to acknowledge that uh, an application by the Dean of West Burn for a battery storage facility, uh, uh, and that was withdrawn within a very short while. Uh, it's probably turned rocks and bench. <laughs> we just want to hang on in the issue with it is that it's on green belt with someone building uh, <laughs> clouds the water a little. Wow. Yeah, you think you do this where the spur rose beds for coming on to hang out. Oh, well, again, it links on with planning reform, doesn't it? As well, in terms of the new uh, things that are coming in, 2033, and then further on in 2035. We have new regulations coming in for sustainability and the presentation uh, that I read to the planning committee, uh, which was really healthy. Um, so, Matt, I don't know if this is something you can look at because I think this will be topical for this committee as well. I mean, we have a lot of learning to share in terms of set of practice construction. So, that would be great. Yeah, just have a look. I'm going to share 5e economic strategy. Yeah, I'll go along. Let's um, look at it and just check to make sure we're not. Completely duplicating yeah. where it's been discussed somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's uh, explore that possibility. Okay. Thanks. Fine.
Great. Okay. With that, everybody, thank you very much indeed. A few more sentiments on the meeting. I Oh, no, 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 no,